I'm a video game designer. Help. I'm trapped in my company's new VR horror creation. Written by J Group. We'd been working day and night on our newest game. It's not like we got paid overtime either. We were all salaried employees, and it was in our contracts that we had to work as many hours as necessary to produce each game by its deadline. Within federal legal limits, of course. Although most of us pushed it even further than that to appease the demands of our boss. The newest title we'd been working on was a horror game. We were working on a next generation VR version, which was coming along well. The game was in its final stages, with just a few glitches to work out here and there. We were in charge of adapting it to VR for a major gaming company's virtual reality platform. Past versions of the game had been scary, but the version we were working on was going to give people heart attacks. I mean that literally, and I expressed my concerns to management. They were considering toning it down, but it kept getting worse and worse every time I tested it. And by worse, I mean better, since that's what we were going for. The game was meant to terrify. It had a way of drawing you back in also, making you want to play more and more, as all great games do. Our head of development, Garrett, was a genius. He'd been working day and night, making the rest of our efforts look like minuscule in comparison. Sometimes I would spend a week working on something and would show it to him, and he would tell me he had already made the thing himself in a matter of hours, several days before. It could be infuriating. He was also a bit of a weirdo. Occult imagery and objects were displayed all throughout his office. He dressed like a middle-aged goth, wearing black and white makeup, dark clothing, and nail polish. He would brag about snuff films and cult ritual videos he had found on the dark web. Conversations with him would always shift quickly towards the macabre, and awkward silences would occur on the regular. To call him eccentric was an understatement. He was also a savant, and could code, model, texture, rig, script, animate, light, and composite masterfully, a set of skills rarely possessed by a single person. He had told me cryptically that this game would be very special to him, and invited me to his office for a private run-through of the finished product. He had done the final coding himself, and told me he was very proud of the results. I couldn't wait to see what he had done since he had spent the last week in his office alone, barely sleeping. No one disturbed him when he was in the zone. At the rate he worked, I imagine he had made tremendous improvements. I was a little frightened for what I was about to experience. We waited until after work. Sitting in his dimly lit office, I looked out the window to see the sun had begun to go down, and it was becoming dark out. The street lights started to come on in the distance, flickering, and my stomach growled. I would be having a late dinner again tonight, it seemed. Garrett finally came back from whatever he had been doing in the other room. I thought his eyes would look exhausted after the lack of sleep we had witnessed from him in the past week, but they were darting and alert. He looked manic, almost paranoid. He quickly brought the VR headset over to me and tried to thrust it onto my head without a word, his eyes wide and staring ahead blankly. I stopped him. Whoa! Easy, man! I'll put it on! What's up with you? You're acting weirder than usual. It looked like he broke out of a trance and finally made eye contact with me. He paused, looking confused, like he had forgotten where he was for a moment. Then he laughed awkwardly and said he was just really excited for me to try the new update. He told me that he trusted my opinion. I never bullshitted him when I thought something was below his standards, which he respected. I put the headset on. It was a helmet that connected with the haptic suit I was wearing. The expensive suit gave little shocks and jolts to make the VR experience more realistic. It wouldn't hurt you. 
But if you were getting shot repeatedly with a gun, for instance, it would make you uncomfortable. I heard an unfamiliar click as he adjusted the helmet and pulled it tighter onto my head. I heard a high-pitched wiring sound, like a dentist drill and felt a pinch, almost like a bee sting, in the back of my skull. OW! What the hell was that? I yelled at him. We were not off to a good start. That had really hurt. Sorry, new headwear. Still getting the bugs out. He mumbled. It had stung badly. The pain lingered back there like a dull ache. It reminded me again of a dentist's drill and the soreness afterwards. You turned the haptics down, right? I asked him. He had a tendency to forget that step, and his simulations always pressed the technology to its limits. I didn't want to go home with bruises again like I had after playing the martial arts fighting game he had me test last year. Yeah, don't worry, he said dismissively. I heard him quickly typing commands on his computer. An old wooden door suddenly appeared in front of my eyes, and I opened the rusty latch, stepping inside. I brushed spider webs out of the way with my hands, feeling their softness give way as my haptic gloves swiped through them. They clung to me as I walked forward, feeling sticky and gross. Nice touch, I thought. Walking forward, I saw that it was very dark in the dungeon, even near the entrance. How do I pull out the flashlight? I can't see. I got rid of it. Check it out. I think this is better. He told me what to do, and I performed the sequence of motions to pull out a match and light it. I saw it was burning down quickly, like a real match. Seriously? <laughs> I laughed. As if this game isn't creepy enough, now I've got a match to see with? Huh. Let me guess, if I pull out a weapon, the light will go out, right? Of course, he said. You can't hold a lit match and pull out a knife at the same time. Where's the realism in that? It would blow out. I walked forward with the lit match, guttering in my fingers. I held up my other hand, cupping the flame to block the draft. The darkness enveloped me, and I was afraid as I stepped past each alcove where something could be hiding, waiting to jump out at me from the shadows. The match was already burning close to my fingertips, and I adjusted my grip to make more room for the flame. I stepped quietly down the stairs and into the dungeon. I couldn't help but marvel at the realism of the graphics. The supercomputer we had running the game made it look like real life, and the movements of my avatar were smooth and seamless. The lighting and shadows were perfect and I quickly forgot I was playing a game. Once I reached the bottom of the stairs, the flame burned down to the bottom of the match. Singeing my fingers, causing me to yelp in pain, I was suddenly bathed in darkness. Hey man, come on, I told you to turn the haptics down, didn't you hear me? Huh, oh, uh, sorry, just did that. Garrett didn't sound too concerned. It had really hurt and I told him he better turn it down a lot. It was too much for even the most hardcore gamer. My fingers were still stinging, and it felt like he had done real damage. I sure as hell hope so. That felt like it actually burnt my fingers. I lit another match, and the light flared up to reveal a tall, dead man looming over me. He was dressed in a torn blue suit, and was his face falling apart? Decomposing. Through the holes in his flesh, I could see muscle, exposed bone, and maggots squirming. I could actually smell his rotting flesh, but that wasn't possible, was it? His mouth hung open as he staggered towards me and drool poured around it. Fuck! I screamed, jumping backwards. He was coming at me fast, and I felt my heart beginning to pound. It was just a game. But after what the match had done to my finger, I was worried what this might feel like. I imagined the thing tearing into my flesh and ripping my belly open to feed on my innards, and worried about the haptic settings again. I kicked upwards, 
and my foot should have connected squarely with the creature's jaw. But he ducked, sidestepping out of the way at the last second with an effortless head movement resembling a professional boxer. He darted towards me with inhuman speed, his hands outstretched, jagged talon fingernails stomping inches from my face. I had the thing by the throat and was holding it back with all my strength. It was snapping its teeth so close to my face, I could smell its horrible stinking breath. But how was that possible? I gouged out the thing's eyes with my thumbs and felt two satisfying pops, which sprayed my face with blood and intraocular fluids. <sighs> how, how am I smelling things in here? How the hell is that possible? Garrett? He snickered and just said it was an upgrade he had been tinkering with. He asked how I liked it. It's disgusting, man! Just like the hat dicks. I get where you're coming from, but you've got it cranked up to 11. You need to dial it back. I can't take much more of this. I felt like I was being pushed to my limits, but found I still had a smile on my face. <laughs> Despite the pain and discomfort. I was pouring sweat and felt exhausted already, and I had only faced one bad guy. The whole place stunk. He told me I should move on if I wanted to get away from it and go deeper into the game. Go in a bit further. I think you'll like what I've done with the place. He said in a quiet monotone, typing more commands on his keyboard. There were lanterns down here, so at least I didn't have to contend with the darkness. I continued down into the dungeon and found myself killing baby spiders, pinching them between my fingers as I walked. There were thousands of them down here, and they were crawling all over me, biting me with sharp little teeth. I crushed them as I proceeded, listening to their bodies pop beneath my feet as I walked. Pretty soon I found myself in another large room, this one filled with dull lights and spider webs. Oh shit. I thought, I've been killing spider babies, and now here comes the mama. I spotted a knife on the ground and picked it up, grateful to finally have a weapon. I heard movements from behind me and spun around to see the form of an enormous black spider. The thing was as big as a grizzly bear and was furry like a tarantula. Its many red eyes glowed as it skittered towards me on its impossibly long legs. Dozens of smaller, dog-sized spiders were coming at me as well, from all angles. I slashed my knife in the direction of the giant spider's eyes and managed to catch it off guard as it was coming at me. It swiped at me and knocked me down with a giant leg. It began making howling, arachnid noises. Green blood squirted from the wound I had made. Where the green blood landed, it hissed and burned holes in the rocks like a low pH acid. The dog spiders attacked now, their sharp teeth taking bites out of me as I kicked and screamed. I hacked with a knife and swung wildly, killing several of them and wounding others. The enormous spider was on me again now, gnashing its massive teeth at me and holding me down as I fought with everything I had. Its mandibles racked my chest and I felt warm spread across the front of my torso. The green blood from the spiders which covered my hands began to sizzle and burn, and I screamed. I was no longer screaming at Garrett though. I had forgotten he was even there. I was locked in. I managed to kill the spiders, but their blood had done a number on me. My face felt lumpy, and I saw boils were forming on my hand and arms where the acid had burnt my skin. The flesh was red and inflamed and pus was already leaking from several ruptured blisters. I was panting and covered in sweat. The light from a tunnel ahead beckoned me further. My exhaustion was secondary to seeing what lay ahead. I continued on, forgetting that anything had ever existed before this. My life was the game, and the game was my life. There was nothing else. I saw another dim light coming from up ahead. I walked forward and turned a corner going deeper into the caverns. I had reached the lowest level of the dungeon. There would be something waiting for me there. What? I wasn't sure. 
The idea nagged at me and lured me further as each time I was plunged into darkness, there would be a light just up ahead, beckoning me onwards. Occasionally, I would have to pull the matches out and strike one, and inevitably, there would be a creature lurking nearby in the shadows, about to attack. I killed countless zombies, vampires, ghouls, and giant spiders. I was bit by werewolves and captured by necromancers, who put IVs in me and injected purple liquid into my veins, making me feel suddenly less than human. A few times I broke down in panic fits of exhausted madness, laughing and screaming and clutching my oddly shaped head. I couldn't understand how I had ended up down here, in this dungeon of despair. When things would get so difficult I could no longer bear it, and I had a breakdown like that, I would find myself waking up with no memory of having fallen asleep. I'd bolt upright terrified, astonished to find myself still alive. I had no compulsion to eat or drink, and realized now that Garrett was keeping me alive with intravenous or a feeding tube. Maybe. I finally realized all this after how long? Weeks? Maybe months. I had been in here so long, I had explored to the outermost boundaries of Garrett's creation. I found a seam, a back door leading to this primitive workstation. I believe Garrett put it in here himself so he could spend more time in his creation and still access the outside world. He likely assumed I would never make it this far. When I first saw it, the laptop looked so alien to me, I actually shrank back from it, afraid. I wondered what the Dungeon of Despair had cooked up for me in this, its latest attack on my sanity. But then I remembered. It all came flooding back as I looked at the familiar screen. After screaming for several minutes in a panic fit of rage, I tried to pull the helmet off my head, but found it hurt badly to even try. It was locked on tight, and the more I struggled, the more I realized it was actually implanted into the back of my skull. I felt a long, thick needle was drilled into my head. I've questioned whether the technology is doing something to my memories as well as my senses. The thoughts I've had of my life before this are hazy and difficult to grasp. I worry if I spend much more time in here, I might never get out. I may never want to. I can't remember much of anything. The more I think of it, I can't think now why I started typing on this machine. There's a light up ahead. It just appeared from nothing. I should see what's up there. Maybe it leads further into the dungeon. I'll take a quick peek and then come right back here. <laughs>